Listen, saints of God, let's do this. We're getting ready to bring the preacher up. Before he comes, let's do this. I'm going to ask everybody to get a seat in your hand, if you will. We want to bless the man of God, bless the word of God. So into, so into the word of God before he comes. Those of you who will get a seat, glory to God, whatever you can give. I've got $200, but whatever you can give, do that. If you can give $20, that would be wonderful. Amen. That would be wonderful. Those of you who can do that, we would most appreciate that. We want to bless the, bless the word of God coming through this man of God. Amen. Uh, and, uh, so we appreciate all that you do. Glory to God. All that you do. I don't want to take a long time. It doesn't take a long time because I want to get to the word of God. Is that all right? Amen. We're moving. We're in good time. We're making good time today. Amen. All right. If you've got that seed, just stand on your feet, if you will. Stand on your feet. Again, you can give with Zelle, which is the preferred method. But you can give with GiveLify, Cash App, PayPal, Cash or Check. Well, Sunday school was good this morning. I'm not, it's good every morning, but every Sunday morning, but it was real good this morning. Glory to God, real good. Talked about maturity and love, caring about other, preferring other people above yourself. Yeah, yeah, it's a good lesson. All right, if you'll lift the seat in your right hand. Or lift the dock, the uh, device that you're sowing with. Father, we thank you now for the seed that's being sown. God, we sow it to your glory and to your honor. And we ask that you would bless the sower, bless the seed, and bless the soil into which it is sown. And we give you glory and honor and praise in Jesus' name. And the people of God said, Amen. The people of God said, Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Come on, y'all, look at our national adjective. <laughs> national. He expects to be working in the Holy Convocation this year. So when y'all watch the Holy Convocation on YouTube, y'all look way over in the corner. You're going to be ready. Of course, you never know. Because he might be one of those taking one of the... Uh, one of the bishops up to, I speak it now. You have my support, man. You got my support, brother. I'm going to be, and when you walk the bishop up to the pulpit, I'm going to be like, yeah, that's my guy. <laughs> Hallelujah. People of God, the most important thing in your life is the word of God. When you walk in God's word, you are walking in authority, walking in victory and walking in the overflow of life. Because even if you don't have a lot of money, but you got a lot of God's word, you've got power. You've got authority. And so today I asked my brother and friend to come back and to minister for us. And so would you all please stand on your feet? And clap your hands and receive the shepherd of the people of Purpose Church in Portland, Oregon, the Bishop Lonnie Holsley. Come on and receive him. Come on, clap your hands in here like you know who God is. I'm going to say it again. Will you clap your hands like you know who God is? Clap your hands like you know what he's done. Has he done anything recently for you lately? Come on, has he done anything for you lately? Well, let's say it like this. Let's practice biblical principles. Psalms 47 1 says, Oh, clap your hands. All of you who are considered to be God's people. Your hand clap gives you spiritual identity. Oh, clap your hands, all of you. Oh, clap your hands, all of you. Oh, clap your hands, all of you who are considered to be God's people. But I'm so glad that the psalmist didn't stop there. But I heard him say that we ought to open up our mouths and declare 
and shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. There is a sound that God associates with victory. And if you have it, come on, open up your mouths and let the Lord hear it. I said there is indeed a sound that God associates with victory. And if you really have it, open up your mouths and let the Lord hear it. Come on, for the next 35 seconds, open up your mouth and tell the Lord, thank you. Tell him, Lord, I love you. Lord, you're awesome. You're altogether lovely. The Bible says, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. That means your praise or your praise is directly indicative of what your opinion is of your God. Come on, give God a praise in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. While you... Hallelujah. I feel God in this place. I feel God in this place. While you're standing, reach out and grab a neighbor by the hand. Somebody said, why am I grabbing the neighbor by the hand? Because according to the candor of scripture, the Bible says wherever there be two, perhaps even three who would touch and agree, he would be in the midst of thee. And so listen, since there's far more than just two or three of us in here, I believe that God is going to show up and show out that he's going to come through and give us breakthrough. So look at that neighbor. If you weren't going to talk to him, perhaps you shouldn't have sat next to him. But say, hey, neighbor, since you're touching me, will you agree with me that God's about to do something incredible for me? Say, hey, 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 will you, since you're touching me, will you agree with me that God's about to open up a door for me? Come on, say, hey, I'm not playing. Say, hey, since you're touching me, will you agree with me that God's about to work a miracle for me? Come on, tell him again. Say, hey, since you're touching me. Because tell him, since COVID, I don't let everybody touch me. So since you're touching me, will you agree with me that God's about to do the inconceivable for me? Now pull on him a little bit and say, and when it happens for me, since I got you by the hand, it's going to happen for you too. Maybe that was a wrong neighbor. Look over to the other side of the road and say, hey, when it happens for me, it's going to happen for you too. When he shows up for me, He's going to show up for you too. When he heals me, he's going to heal you too. Uh -huh. When he opens that door and makes that way for me, it can't not. he's going to open up that door and make that way for you too. Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, it is once again that we find it an absolute ecclesiastical mandate to first thank you for everything before we dare ask you for anything. Thank you for a roof over our heads, clothes on our backs, shoes on our feet. Thank you for being our way maker, our shield, our buckler. Thank you for being our heart fixer, our mind regulator. God, we thank you for your traveling mercies that brought us over the highways and certainly over the airways to this place today without the loss of any. God, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. For even the Bible conveys that great is your name and greatly to be praised. God, we thank you for keeping us from this time last week to this time this week from all hurt, harm, and danger. God, we thank you that you've canceled every single solitary assignment that was set up by the enemy and allow us to enter into this sanctuary proclaiming victory. And now, God, for the next few moments, we ask you to word our mouth. Give us what to say. And certainly we need your ingenuity and your direction as to how we are to disseminate or even pontificate what you've given us to articulate to only those whom you knew would congregate in this place tonight or this afternoon. God, speak a word now that meets us precisely where we are. And then inevitably propels us to our place of divinity or destiny. That our coming would not have been in vain. And then, God, as we so often pray, pretty please with sugar on top. Let the words of my mouth and the very meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Because you are indeed my Lord, my strength, and my redeemer. And all the people of the Lord who really Lord, love the Lord, start clapping your hands again and give your God some praise. Oh, come on. You can do just a little better than that. Clap your hands and give God an abundance of praise. How would you praise him if I told you your praise was a prerequisite for whatever God has purposed you to get in this service today? I said, how would you praise him if I told you praise is the prerequisite for whatever you're going to get? Hallelujah from God in this service. And I need about 13 people to just holler like it's already done. Hallelujah. 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 Point at somebody and say, it's already done. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We certainly honor God for his presence in this place. Thank God for being back, amen, at this particular juncture, time in our lives. I don't know about you, but I, if I was in a uh, traditional church, I'd be in a polyester robe singing, glad to be in the service. Glad to be in the service. Glad to be in the service one more time. Why, Bishop, are you so glad? 
because I understand indisputably and un unarguably that the Lord did not have to allow any one of us to live. And I'm glad to be in the service of the Lord one more time. If we're watching the news and reading the reviews, there's so many things, so many heinous things, so many crazy and discombobulated things that are going on in the nation. But I still believe the word of God. It says, except the Lord keep the city, the watchman watches but in vain. Amen. And the Bible says that a thousand shall fall at thy right hand, ten thousand at thy other. But none things, certain things shall not come nigh us. And I just believe that God is protecting us and covering us, keeping us in this day. Let's give uh, great honor and praise to the ecclesiastical candlestick of this house. My friend, my brother, my co-laborer. Will you celebrate Superintendent Gerald Simpkins today? Come on. Certainly appreciate you, sir. Come on. I can't hear nobody. Holler like you know who he is and what he's done. Like he's prayed for your family and bailed you out of jail. Oh, did I say that in church? I'm sorry. Uh, we bless God. Amen. And you cannot give it up for the man of God without celebrating the fragrance of this house. Let's celebrate Lady Simpkins today. We honor you, woman of God. Amen. We honor you. And for all of the ecclesiastical officers that govern and gone and hold up the arms of ministry here, we certainly salute and bless God for you, these wonderful mothers and these missionaries. And so, and to each of you, the sound team, the audio visual team, to these awesome Levites. Let's say amen for these awesome Levites today. Come on, clap your hands for them like you know who they are. We certainly bless God, amen, for this opportunity, amen, and certainly to kick off this great revival. I know you've got some heavy hitters coming behind me, so all I got to do is get on base and they'll bring you home the rest of the week, amen. I, I know each and every one of them, and I know you are going to be blessed, so don't miss a night this week, because I really do believe that God is going to start us today, but he's going to give us great finale by Friday, amen. Grab your Bibles, your iPads, your biblical periodicals, wherever you keep your biblical periodicals, and we're going to Philippians chapter number one. Uh, will you clap your hands for my beautiful wife and her absence today? Amen. Talk to her before I came to service and she sends her love to First Lady, certainly, and to each of the Lord's people. Amen. She was with us the last time we were here. Amen. I believe Superintendent wasn't uh, with us that particular time. I think he was traveling somewhere in Jamaica, Paris, Guam, Cuba, somewhere. I'm not sure. Amen. But we bless God. Amen. That he trusted us uh, with his service. And I'm glad to be in service with him. Certainly praying for your family, sir. Amen. Heard about the loss in the family and we're praying your strength. Amen. And giving condolences to the family. Philippians chapter number one. Uh, just a little Sunday school lesson. Amen. Talk to us about Sunday school and Bible study. I, I'm just going to give my little Easter speech and sit down in just a few moments. Is that all right? Amen. Philippians chapter number one. I want to thank God. You have a wonderful staff. They've treated us wonderfully well, Superintendent. The correspondence and everything has been tremendous. Thank God for the spirit of excellence that rests upon this place. Philippians chapter number one. I want to say to the woman of God who gave the announcement that God is not through blessing you. Uh, I sense that in the next season of your life, in fact, within the next 60 days, you're going to see God move like he has never, ever moved before in your entire life. God says you are not the forgotten child. You have served this ministry. You have served others. You have served your family. But God said he's getting ready to serve you like he's never served you before. He said you've prayed some things in secret, but you're going to be rewarded in public. He said, there's some things that even you perhaps prayed last night. You maybe haven't even talked to anybody else about. And God said, you can drop those tears because you've earned them. Because you've been crying in private, but God's going to reward you in public. He said, he has not forgotten you. He has not given up on you. He has not turned his back on you. But he's going to do everything he's promised to do. And I'm not one of those who will prophesy and hide. Superintendent knows just where to find me. Within the next 60 days, you're going to see God move like he's never moved in your life. And for the 17 people that will shout for hers, God said the same can be true for you too. Hey, good God almighty. Somebody point at your hand at your sister and say it's already done. Philippians chapter number one. Sound man, if I can get a little more in the monitors. I'm a young man with old man issues. I struggle to hear sometimes. So if we can get a little more in the monitors, that'll be good. Philippians chapter number one. Again, my Sunday school lesson today. Are you there? Let's read in concert together. What does it say? Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ, to the, all the saints in Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi, with the bishops and the deacons. I tease my deacons so often, but I'm going to say it here because the Bible makes it clear. The same responsibilities or accountabilities that he lays upon the uh, life of a bishop also rest on the life of a deacon. So he's very careful to say who he's talking to or who he's writing to in this particular check. He said, I'm writing to the people that are Philippi, but I'm speaking specifically on behalf and to the bishops, the deacons and everybody in between. Verse number two, grace be unto you and peace from God, our father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Y'all reading with me? 
Verse three, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. He says, every time I think about you, I thank God for you. Uh, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you, all making requests with joy, making all of my requests. When I make requests on your behalf, I got joy about doing it. Verse number five, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day unto now. Now, uh, superintendent, he's really talking to the faithful. He said, I'm I'm really blessing God for those that I've had a privilege of praying for who have been faithful in their fellowship in the gospel, even from the first day till now. Being confident, we will take the majority of our sermonic concentration. It says, being confident, confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a mediocre work. No, no. A good work in you it, huh, will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. I'm going to back up and say it again because you're my family as well as my friends. He says, being confident of this very thing, this one thing, this uh, specific thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it, will do it, will work it out until the day of Jesus Christ. Now, let me not sound like a whole lot of anything to amount to a whole lot of anything to you, but this morning or this afternoon, in brief for the sake of momentary information dissemination there i say clarification or verification look down your road let your neighbor know say hey neighbor here's the word for us today come on if you wasn't gonna talk to him you shouldn't have sat next to him say hey neighbor here's the word for us today say i insist that in god we still have some unfinished business yeah in god we still have some unfinished business. You may be seated momentarily in and amongst the household of faith. I insist, I've come all the way from Vancouver by way of Portland to insist that in the spirit of God or in the realm of God, in the kingdom of God, we still have sis, some unfinished business. About 20 minutes and we're going to go to work. Is that all right? Now, uh, people of the living God, it is this week as I awaited and even superintendent anxiously anticipated just what it was that God would bring me uh, to Newark in these minuscule ministerial moments to speak. It was actually as I paused and I pondered. Can I just talk to you today? It was as I paused, I pondered and prepared for what he would be. Uh, he would say it would, that would be sermonically shared that the Lord himself began to make me fully aware just what it is or just what it was that he have me to decidedly declare. Y'all going to help me? In fact, it was as I sat solemnly, literally superintendent, I sat solemnly and began to make my personal preparatory for what I'm going to call this obviously ordained ecclesiastical oratory that I found myself overcome. Can I tell you that since I found myself just a little bit, the slightest bit overcome uh, with these weighted words of wisdom, even overwhelmed and even inundated with what I heard the Lord say that I was to come today and cause to be communicated. Are you going to help me? Mm. Believers, believers, while it is abundantly true, it is indeed abundantly true that over the course of the last or past few years, there are a mass myriad of things that the Lord has brought us through am I by myself? If you look back over your testimony, you'll sure, I'm sure you will agree that over the last few years or the last few years, there's a mass myriad of things that the Lord has brought us through. And yet there's some things that he's still promising first lady that he's going to do. In fact, people of God, per what I've derived, it is that we have somehow, superintendent, we have somehow situationally survived and God has graced us and even brought us out alive for what he wants to do Deacon, in this next season of our lives. Now, there's no doubt that some, some people have given uh, what I'm going to call serious examination to our situations and they've looked upon all that we've done and they felt like that our mission is accomplished. However, not uh, no matter how they have virtually viewed or uh, uh, looked at our very personal endeavors this afternoon, I must more than merely suggest in your midst that those of us who are really clicked in with God understand indisputably and unarguably that we still have my brother, some unfinished business. 
Now, people of God, just the other day as I sat in solitude while flying this way, superintendent, it was the other day at about 35, 36,000 feet in altitude that I evaluated. I have some good conversations when I'm up there with God. Uh, at about 35,000 feet in altitude, I began to evaluate and investigate the spiritual aptitude. And I looked at your theme. I looked at the spiritual or situational schematics of your summer revival thematic. And I found that nothing that you are proclaiming this week is at all irrational or erratic, but it's not even problematic, but it's not even spasmatic. It's actually rather pragmatic. Are you going to help me? I'm going to say it again because that was a lot to say and I need to convey that when I looked at the thematic of the schematic of your thematic, I did not find that it was erratic, neither that it, was it particularly pragmatic or problematic, but it was really rather pragmatic. In fact, I must insist that in these ministerial moments, it is with your perceived permission. Can I have your permission, sir? It is with your perceived permission that the Lord made uh, it my most earnest ambition that I choose and use the ministerial monologue of this afternoon's deity director dialogue to make sure that it's chronologically chronologued and even consciously cataloged that God, I believe God wants your superintendent and this church and even your committee to make sure that it's emphasized that God wants to do some things in our lives as we press towards the prize. Believers, in these few fleeting ministerial moments, I must stand flat-footed and adamantly insist that we are indeed in a press. And what are we pressing for? We are in a press to possess everything that God promised. Are y'all going to help me in here? Literally, there's no more waiting. There's no more debating. There's no more hesitating. There's no more procrastinating. We are in an all-out press to possess what God has promised. And I came all the way to Newark on this morning to insist that we indeed have some unfinished business. Now, the, the situational sayings of the Old Testament were really rather insistent. He said, I could teach. So can I teach today? Uh, the, the rather rich recitations of the Old Testament were really rather insistent. And they spoke to us without much of a speech impediment in bringing initiation to what I'm going to call the core of today's conversation. Are you still here? In fact, it was, it was, come on, Sunday school alumni, help me to clarify. It was a gentleman known to us by the name of Joshua. Joshua, and I'm going to call, call him the poised prophet whom actually spoke words of affirmation via what we gone and glean from the rather rich recitations of the book of Joshua, chapter number 11, roundabout verse number 15. You still here? Mm. In fact, here is where the text proposes and exposes, even definitively discloses that Joshua left nothing undone. Is that what your Bible says? He left nothing undone that was assigned by the divine to his spiritual leader, Moses. You see, Joshua would insist if he was here in our midst, my brother, that he knew he had some unfinished business. Now, I need you to remember, come on, walk with me. I need you to readily remember that according to the consecrated candor and conjecture of the Holy Scripture, when the book of Hebrews, chapter number 12, roundabout verse true, it's Christ's character to tell us and let us know that Jesus is both the author, the writer, as well as the facilitated finisher of our faith. Is that what your Bible says? Now, furthermore, if you ever dare to explore what you just cannot ignore when correctly categorized or dare I, dare I say characterized, conceptualized or contextualized, what we would be wise to readily realize is that he is a faithful finisher. Where's my help coming from? Where's my help coming from? Our father, Jesus, God, our father is a faithful finisher. And then Jesus picks up the pen and writes in, chimes in again via the rather rich recitations of the book of John, chapter number nine, verse number four, if you ever dare to explore. And here he makes it just quite clear. Mm. Per what Jesus himself contextually conveys, he says, I must work. I, I, I've got to work. I've got a job to do before I'm through. I must work uh, the work of him that has sent me when while it is day for night cometh when no man can work. I need to tell a few of you, if not all of you and each and every one of you, I need to tell you that it's imperative and essential without it being dismissive that what God has called us to do, sis, is very time sensitive. Are you hearing me at all? Look at your neighbor, speak it on them with favor and tell them we are now facing some time sensitive 
initiatives. Okay, I'm going to say it again until it gets all the way in. We are now facing some time sensitive initiatives. I haven't always been saved since I've been saved. One of the secular songwriters wrote and said, time is on our side. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if that's true when it comes to what God has called you to do because there are some time sensitive initiatives. Are y'all going to help me? Yeah. And I, let me just pull up here, uh, Superintendent and Propositionally Park. There are some things we've got to do before the day gets too dark. Have you been watching the news, reading the views? There's some things we got to do before the day gets too dark. Believers, in light of what our nation is in and on, what in our nation is about to transpire, you cannot, I cannot, we cannot afford to let any more time expire prior to doing what God desires. Am I helping anybody in here? I said, in light of what in our nation, my brother, is about to transpire, we cannot let any more time expire prior to doing what God requires and desires look at your neighbor if you were like Bishop J. Drew Sheard and say we got work to do before this day is through oh y'all ain't talking to nobody look at them again like they're your family member or at least your friend tell them we got work to do uh, before the day is through no more waiting no more hesitating no more debating no more contemplating no more mediating no more meditating we've got work to do before the day is through people are dying every day we got work to do before the day the people are shooting every day we got work to do while the day before the day is through people are killing and being killed on our street we've got work to do before the day is through y'all sit down y'all making me nervous early 10 15 more minutes and i'm almost done i promise i am so now this week this week my brother this this i'm feeling uh i'm feeling the holy ghost now this week in my spirit in my spirit god spoke in a manner that perhaps only i could hear it and my brother he himself began to both utter and unveil something additional that is both biblical and scriptural uh, as it pertains to the perpendicular parallel of modern day israel are you going to help me I need you to pay attention. He turned my attention to what we find momentarily mentioned in the rather rich and prolific specifics of the book of Jeremiah chapter number four, right there between verses one and six. Come on, walk with me. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is that the minor prophet Nehemiah, if you dare to take listen and pay very close attention he is giving simple summation young preacher he's giving simple summation to our situation or dare i say it was a contextual record recorded confrontation can i talk to you about confrontation uh, that israeli the initial israeli army was having with their enemy congregation are y'all going to help me now once again superintendent some of my sunday school alumni would assuredly recall that nehemiah's ass task was both tantamount and tall mm -hmm. for by God it was both his commission as well as his call to rebuild the city's walls am I teaching the text okay however when Israel's adversaries heard the word they got angry when they heard that you were building when they heard the people of God were building the enemy got angry and took issue with what the prophet and the Jews were being called upon to do can I teach this thing and the Bible says that they began to speak out. Uh, can I look at a few of you and tell you be careful who you talk to when you're on a mission to do what you've been called to do by God uh, I'm gonna say it to the wall so nobody gets mad before I leave and make this clarion call I said be careful who you talk to while you're doing what God has called you to do the Bible says that the enemy got angry when he heard what they were called to do so he began to speak doubt that believing that what Nehemiah and his associates would do would never ever come about in fact the text later testified and i'm fast forwarding and cutting across the field that two brothers two brothers by the name of sanballat and tobai they infiltrated the camp what did they do i'm so glad you asked they infiltrated the camp by pretending to be on nehemiah's side acting as though they really wanted God's people to be fortified, but it was always their plan to destroy and divide. 
Where's my help coming from? I said they were pretending like they were on superintendent. Sim I'm sorry. They were depending, pretending like they were on Nehemiah's side when all the while first lady, their plan was to destroy and to divide. You see the text unveils and rather unveiled detail. I feel a preach around my ankle. I'm going there in a minute. Uh, I, 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 I believe the Bible unveils and rather detailed, definitive detail that which I must now tell modern day Israel's born again believers. The battle will be against the builder, but the fight is against the finisher. Where is my help coming from? Look at your neighbor, grab their hand and tell them with favor, say, yeah, the battle is against the builder, but the real fight comes against the, feet, the, the finisher. Look down to the other side of your row, say, yeah, there is a battle that comes up against the builder, but the fight is against the finisher. As we derive here, verses four and five we discover and derive that the tricks the adversary tried got angered it angered the builders see the build the enemy ain't the only one that can get angry y'all ain't saying nothing to me i said what the adversary tried angered the builders so what happened they drew closer together hear me solid rock i said it angered the builders so they drew closer together i'm gonna say it again until it gets all the way in it angered the builders so instead Instead of separating, they got closer. Look at your number and say, let's get it together. Whatever God is going to do before this year is through, let's get it together. Whatever God is, doors God's going to open in 2004, let's get them together. And the Bible says, despite the enemy's injurious endeavors, it's now made you more determined than ever to recover and see Israel get the victory. And because Israel was so inclined, the Bible says that they rebuilt the wall in a matter of time because they all had the same mind. Am I teaching the text okay? I said the Bible was so inclined. The Bible says that they rebuilt build the wall because they all had the same mind you see the people had a mind to work and might i in this moment as i move towards my clothes speak into your midst that they refuse to let anybody stop this because they knew they had unfinished business they refused to let anybody block this because they knew they had unfinished business they refused to let anybody halt this because they knew that they had unfinished business they refuse my brother to let anybody hinder or halt this uh, because they knew uh, that they had some unfinished business uh, I need to tell somebody anybody and everybody uh, that although it's been long awaited uh, I come to Newark to insist uh, that you still have unfinished business uh, although it's been greatly anticipated uh, critically communicated uh, cranially contemplated uh, I came here to insist uh, that you still have unfinished business uh, though it's been cranially contemplated uh, doubtfully debated uh, poisonously propagated uh, humanly hesitated uh, habitually hated uh, I come uh, my brother to insist uh, that you still have some unfinished business uh, in fact look at your neighbor uh, and tell them we've been favored uh, so let's finish our business uh, we've been fought uh, but now we're favored to finish. We've been battled. But now we're favored to finish. We've been troubled. We've even struggled. But now we're favored to finish. We've been tried. We've been denied. We've been disqualified. But we're favored to finish. We've been contested. Yeah, yeah. But we're still favored to finish. Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, after all the headache and heartache, we're still favored to finish after all the heartbreak and the mistakes. We're still favored to finish after all the issues that we had to go through. Sis God told me to tell you, you're still favored to finish after all the scandalism, the criticism, the skepticism, the ostracism. We're still favored to finish after all the drama and all of the trauma, all the hail and all the travail. I insist uh, that we're still favored to finish. Uh, when I woke up in my hotel uh, this morning, God told me to tell uh, modern day Israel, uh, you've got business uh, that you've got to finish. Uh, 
When you woke up this morning, uh, you had business to finish. Uh, when you rolled out of bed, uh, it was swirling in your head. Uh, you had business to finish. Uh, when you stood up on the floor, uh, when you wiped the sweep out your eyes, uh, you had business to finish. Uh, when you ran in the shower, uh, and I pray you did, uh, ran in the shower, uh, you had business to finish. Uh, when you dried yourself off, uh, you had business to finish. Uh, when you put on your good clothes, uh, you had business to finish. Uh, when you jumped in your car, uh, you had business to finish. Uh, when you drove to the church, uh, you had business to finish. Uh, when you jumped on the parking lot, uh, stepped on the parking lot, uh, you had business to finish. Uh, when you came through the door, uh, you heard God say it even more. Uh, you got business to finish. Uh, now grab your neighbor uh, by both of their hands. Uh, rock them and shake them. Uh, if you can uh, and say ah, i insist uh, we've got business uh, to finish uh, thank you my brother uh, grab another neighbor rock him and shake him with favor uh, and say ah, i insist uh, we got business uh, that we gotta finish uh, after all we've gone through uh, after all of our issues uh, i insist uh, we got business to finish uh, now if you believe it uh, and readily receive it, shout glory. I said, if you believe it, and readily receive it, shout glory. If you believe it, and readily receive it, shout oh, 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 oh glory. Hey. Point to somebody and say, I got business to finish. Y'all be seated. Five minutes, five minutes, I promise. Five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. Now, if I, if I were at home, First Lady, I would say it like this. I feel, I feel, I feel what I call my weekly sermonic sense of urgency to now move rather rapidly and with all ecclesiastical expediency towards the point of place of my clerical closure because 17 and three quarters of you are now ready. Mm -hmm. And so all of this, all of this, I must very earnestly insist now requires us to give the furtherance of our fullest focus to our conversational, situational, topical text here in the book of Philippians chapter number one and now very soon be done uh, y'all taught me i can't announce a text and not teach it y'all be seated one second as this particular chapter is contextually broken open and if you pay very close attention it's via the verbals of verse number one that the apostle paul who is our literary luminary dares to make mention and gives introduction what uh, per what's discussed and left on record for us he introduces us to his pro pastoral protege by the name of timetheus Am I teaching okay? Here he clarifies that the, there were assembled in and amongst the people, bishops, deacons, friends, citizens, and members of the church at Philippi. Now, as we arrive down at verse number two, as the text continues, the Apostle Paul speaks in uh, speaks with candor, speaks in this space, and bids the Philippians peace and grace. Am I still in the text? Which is very literally the equilateral equivalency of unmerited favor, the unmerited favor of the Father. Are you still here? He then begins to turn on a dime and begins to to insist something that we cannot in, uh, dismiss that we still have first lady some unfinished business and then I heard I heard Paul dare to declare watch this every time I think of you in remembrance of you I began to call your name in prayer he says my request is that you be bountifully blessed uh, can I teach this thing okay sis maybe I can tell you because I know it's true he says my request when I make my request my request is that you be bountifully blessed he says my request is that your life is blessed my request is your husband or your wife is blessed my request is that your house and your spouse is blessed my request is that your situation location place of habitation is blessed my request watch this is that your uh circumstances and finances are blessed my request is that your future advances your relationships courtships friendships fellowships and even your friendships are blessed are you still here mm. gets down through verse number six and he speaks with annotated analytics with weighted words of wisdom he says with confidence what is pertinent he says this one very thing i am confident the good work that in you god has been begun he's going to do it until it's all done are you still here let me look a few over your eye in my way to my seat and prophesy i need you to prepare for god to start finishing every good thing 
that went over your head i watched it fly by look at the neighbor speak it on them with favor and say start uh, prepare for god to start finishing every good thing in fact this is the year mother this is the year that god's gonna finishing start finishing every good thing this is the month this is the week this is the day this is the hour this is the minute this is the second this is the moment that god is finishing every good thing this is the age the stage and the decade the session the season look at your neighbor and say this is the time that God is going to start finishing every good thing God bless the work that begun and he's not even close to being done who am I talking to he progressed the work when it begun but he's not even through to being done I said God healed and revealed enhanced advanced guided and provided for the work as it begun but he's not even close to being done God shifted and lifted the work when it begun but God says he's not even close to being done look at your neighbor speaking on them with favor and say I am still pursuing it because God's not done doing it oh that was the wrong neighbor lean on one more neighbor as I go to my seat I can't be discreet say I'm still pursuing it because God's not done doing it look over your right shoulder say it even bolder say I'm still pursuing it because God's not done doing it and look at your neighbor like the secular songwriter or the gospel songwriter said way back in the day he said God is not through blessing you maybe that's too cogent for y'all I said look at your neighbor and say God he's not through blessing you he wrote down he wrote it like this superintendent he said you've been waiting on a blessing and it seems it just won't come doors are shut things got rough and it looks like you are done but the devil he is a liar and a deceiver, deceiver too. Wave your hands and shout, God, he's not through blessing you. After all this time, I insist he's not through blessing you. After all of these years, I insist he's not through blessing you. After all of your tears and all of your fears, God's not through uh, blessing you uh, after all the attacks uh, and the situational setbacks. Uh, God's not through uh, blessing you uh, after being talked about, uh, lied on, uh, lied to, uh, lied about, scandalized, uh, criticized. Uh, wave your hand uh, all in the air like you just don't care and shout, God uh, is not through uh, blessing you. Uh, yeah, after all the fights. Uh, the battles uh, and the struggles. Uh, I came to Newark uh, to tell you what's true. Uh, God, uh, he's not through uh, blessing you. God uh, is about to move in your midst because uh, you got uh, unfinished business. Uh, God's about to improve. Uh, yes, you uh, in your midst because uh, you still have unfinished business. Uh, God's about to release a uh, major increase. Uh, who was that for? In your midst, because God said you still have some unfinished, unfinished business. Now lean on a neighbor, talk to him with favor, and say, My father, our father is a faithful finisher. I know it's clear. This is leap year. I know it's clear. It's an Olympic year. And so that's why we got to press towards a prize because what's about to materialize God says he's going to give favor to the finisher who was that for you cannot ignore look at your neighbor and say God is about to give favor to every finisher don't give up because things have gotten rough God is about to give favor to the finisher Tell another neighbor, don't you dare give in when you're facing opposition because God is about to give favor to the finisher. Now wrap your hand around your neighbor's neck and rock them and shake them. Shake them and rock them and begin to project. Say, hey neighbor, let's finish our business. Yeah, 
rock them and shake them. Say, let's finish our business with this close to the promise. Let's finish our business with this close to the purpose. Let's finish our business with this close to the open door, to the outpour. Let's finish our business. Grab another neighbor, rock him and shake him with favor, and say, with this close to our healing and revealing, let's finish our business. The old song said, with two, two, too close to our journeys, our journeys in. Let's finish our business. Let's finish our business. Let's finish our business. You may have to cry, but finish your business. It may get hard, but finish your business uh, you will be tried uh, but finish uh, your business uh, it will get heavy uh, but finish uh, your business uh, bishop oh uh, superintendent uh, write the vision and let them finish tell your neighbor he's gonna write uh, and we gonna run Y'all didn't say it. Y'all didn't say it. Y'all didn't say it. Y'all don't say it. Say, Superintendent, you keep writing and we going to run and finish our business. We're too close. We're too close to Canaan. Let's finish our business. Now, if you believe it and you're committed to receive it, take the next 60 seconds. Jump, run, scream, give God praise. For what's about to manifest. I'm on my way home. But I said run. Jump. Scream. Give God praise. For what he's going to do. In the next 60 days. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. I said run. Jump. Leap. Give God praise. For what he's going to do. In the next 60 days. We going to finish this business uh, we come too far uh, not to finish uh, we come through too much uh, not to finish uh, it's why i gotta finish uh, i gotta finish uh, favor uh, to the finisher uh, point at somebody and say favor i'm done somebody shout favor to the finisher uh, According to your thematic text, I count not myself to have apprehended. Look at your neighbor and say, I don't have it, but I'm going to have it. I count not myself to have apprehended, but mother, this one thing I'm going to do, I'm forgetting. I'm forgetting those things that are behind excuse me if i say this but tell your neighbor get your mind off your behinds and start reaching for what's predestined wave your hands and say i'm determined to finish i'm determined to finish i just need a few finishes so let me come shake your hand i need some few finishes run up here i want to shake your hand i said i just need a few yeah finish Finish, 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 finish. No matter how hard, finish, no matter the struggle. Can I, can you come mother? Can you come? I'll come to you if I need to. I'll come to you if I need to. Superintendent, I'm done. I promise. God said he's not through. He's not through. 
and I decree healing to your body because what he wants you to do now you can't do it sick I decree healing to your body because what he wants you to do now you can't do it sick you can't do it infirm God's gonna give you the strength and the footsteps and the wherewithal to finish 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 as you're walking her back to her seat walk with her and say finish mother finish the same is true for you too mother the same is true for you too mother finish finish no 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 somebody get behind her somebody get behind her so finish 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 it's revival but it's sunday morning so i'm respectful of time superintendent rest on your feet i want to pray a mass prayer and get out of here i want to pray a mass prayer flex at somebody and say strong finish i'm determined maybe that was for you sis strong finish strong finish strong finish strong finish woman in the orange strong finish i don't know what it is that you do here in ministry but god says that you get even closer and more fervent about being under your leader God says, as you serve them, he's going to serve you. Almost like the woman of God that was standing here on the front row. He's getting ready to serve your family. He's going to serve you financially. And whatever the secret sickness, whatever the secret sickness was, he's healing it on the inside. And you're going to testify on the outside. Watch what God says. Within the next 45 days, there's going to be a healing testimonial. I'm getting ready to pray and get out of the way. I want to be obedient to our superintendent that he'll let me come back and read another Easter speech another day. But with all seriousness, he told me to tell you, mother, you got some unfinished business. Woman of God, what, superintendent, the woman of God with the beautiful uh, uh, flower dress. She's looking over her shoulder, but it, yeah. What, what, do you, what do you do? What do you do in the ministry? Finance and finance and outreach, Sunday school, multifaceted, 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 multifaceted. God said he has not forgotten you. He's not forgotten you. Uh, but I hear him saying, and of course, consult with your leader as to how you disseminate what I'm about to communicate. He says there are words and there is a word or a word inside of you. That is wisdom. And you have been hindered, not by your leader, by an outside entity from speaking what you know to be true. But as you speak under the auspices of your leader, you're going to liberate and help other women to elevate. Because you're not here just for. We need those words of wisdom. We need those words of wisdom. Let's bow our heads in prayer and I'm moving right out of the way. Thank you, Superintendent, for the privilege, man. I don't take it lightly. I mean, that's my family member. Y'all, send him to Portland. Let me love on him. He loves on me every time I come. Send him to Portland. Him, him first lady. We'll love on him. Take him to the mountain. Take him to the coast. We'll, we're going to love on them because they need a respite as well. Will y'all do that? Send him up there and we'll take good care of him and send him back. I promise we won't keep him. We might want to, but we'll send him back. It's my friend and my brother for real. Bow your heads. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this word, for it's the only thing indisputably and unarguably you said it would never go out void, neither would return in that same manner, but you would prosper in the place that you sent it. So I deem this people to be a far more prosperous people because you sent this ever more prosperous word into this increasingly more prosperous place. I pray that it has ministered grace to every heart, comfort to every footstep. And now it acts as provi provision for the fulfillment of the vision. God, I pray that you do what you do best. Heal, deliver, and bless. And cause your people to have success as they progress. God, now we thank you because we believe we said what you had us to say. Done what we had you to do. And we leave the remainder up to you. Thank you now, God. Because they are encouraged to finish their business. Whatever you purpose, whatever you promise, whatever you pre predestine for this particular time. They are now poised, postured, and positioned. To finish their unfinished business. And we thank you and clap our hands and give you glory in Jesus' name. I'm, 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 I'm taking my seat. I'm going to go get changed and move, move down the road. Um, 
But mama taught me, uh, I grew up in Oakland. Mama taught me good manners. Said, boy, whenever somebody does something for you, especially if it's something good, you tell them thank you. So if you believe that God has been good to you in the, on the count of three, I can't, I can't tell you how to do it. All I can tell you is that you have a mandate to do it. On the count of three, in the same way you believe God has just given your situation elevation, I want you to show your unhindered appreciation by giving him praise. One, two, three, give him praise. Come on, wonderful, wonderful. Come on, clap your hand, open your mouth. Disrupt the communication of the enemy. Just send up a praise.